Rick Celebrini, VP of Player Health and Performance. I've been working with the Golden State Warriors for four years now. Having done this for 32 years, I learned that there's no black and white, that everything's gray. And the more you listen to the player, the more tools and different approaches and creativity that you can bring to the table, the more likely you're gonna have success. There isn't one program for every player. It starts with listening to what their needs are, talking to them and working with them with obviously the knowledge and the expertise that you bring to the table and making sure that you have a program that meets their needs, their expectations, that's um, doable, it's feasible, and that is ultimately not gonna hurt them and lead to the optimal performance in the end. My name is Drew Yoder, Director of Medical Services for the Golden State Warriors, and I've been with the team for nine years. As a staff, if we show consistency in our approach on a day-to-day -day basis, it's, it's gonna bleed over to the players as well. Especially with such a long season, there's a lot of ups and downs, the emotions of each game, but understanding that, you know, there's 82 games in a regular season and playoffs, you know, it, it's a long grind, it's a marathon. If we can stay consistent on a day-to-day -day basis with our approach and our preparation and not get high and highs and low and, and low moments and try to stay consistent, that that's gonna help us get to our goals at the end of the season. You know, a lot of times people, when they're just starting out, maybe dive in too fast and they take take on more than they can really handle and they burn out quickly because of that. It's starting off slow and then building upon that consistency. With any of your, your, you know, your plan or your individualized approach, if you can find consistency in that, your chances of long-term success are, are so much greater. My name is Carl Bergstrom. I'm the Director of Performance with the Golden State Warriors. This is my fourth season. It's a no-brainer. You can't separate physical health, mental health, general health and wellness. They're all intertwined. Obviously, we focus on the physical as a lifestyle choice, something that you don't want it to be a chore. It's something that people wake up and they want to do, and it helps drive their day. Often, there are physical goals um, or goals of just being able to function better. Can you help them do their profession in a way that they don't have pain at the end of the day? That's an easy one. You know, the weekend warrior. I pray when I'm 60, I'm, I'm a weekend warrior. I want to be able to do things that bring me joy. And then there's obviously where we are here, which is the athletes. So anybody who works in sport, they should never lose sight that we're training to improve their capacity to train and to perform. So keep them healthy and keep them competing at the highest level. So a lot of goals are intertwined with the skill side as well as the physical side. You know, one of the ways is to have feedback, um, whether that comes in a coach or it comes in technology or it comes in just your own self-report or observation is every day or maybe every week or every month um, acknowledging and looking at the small but incremental improvements that are getting you towards your goal. And it may not look like much from a day-to-day -day basis, but all, all of a sudden, if you look at it across a week and then a month, you start to see this trend, which can become very motivating and very much a driver for them to, to sort of keep going in terms of achieving that goal. most importantly, it has to be really meaningful to the person. And it has to warrant the commitment, the discipline, the focus, um, the energy that it takes to accomplish that goal. And, and if it doesn't mean enough to you, then it probably you know, will fall off at some point. And again, if you look at the roads that our professional athletes have taken to get to where they are, just to get into the NBA or get drafted, never mind succeed at uh, the NBA level, the general population could take stock of that uh, type of ambition and drive and motivation and, and use it for whatever they have as, as meaningful in their life. If it's that they just want to feel better uh, on a day-to-day -day basis, if they want to be able to run around with their kids, I mean, whatever their goal is, it's about making sure that they have a process that gets them there, but ultimately the goal has to be meaningful to them in the beginning. The future of fitness is still people. 
without a doubt it's it's just that personal relationship and the and the trust and the communication and the and the motivation and the, and the responsiveness and being able to read in our case a player or, or in the, the general population reading that person and just seeing where they're at at that day and I mean when you talk about the art and science of coaching that that is so critical is when to push when to pull back when to motivate when to you know criticize and and all those things are, are human elements that that ultimately can make the difference between success and failure.